I am your host, Leah Denla, and you are listening to the Oracle on Purpose podcast, where we help intentional leaders clarify their purpose and next steps to create a work and life of significance. I'm your host, Leah Dunlap. Today, I am honored to bring a powerful creator and trailblazer who has found her path by helping others create a lasting impact. My guest today is Parshel Tashi. She's a former high school teacher, now entrepreneur, and video producer for the past 10 years. Production company Fresh Level built up multiple locations of operations, producing videos nationally and internationally for organizations like SeaWorld, Bush Gardens, the Wharton School, and Spectrum. It wasn't until she ended her 28-year-long devoted relationship with the church that Parshel began to discover who she really is. This experience has completely transformed her life and the way she serves others today. Whether consulting, producing, or teaching, for Parshel, it's about creating a lasting impact in the world, one video at a time. Welcome to the show, Parshel. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Lee, for having me. I like especially that the last line there, that you are so dedicated to impact. And I think that's something that for me and my teachings, my work that I've done for you know the last 25 years really is about helping people as an intuitive business architect to understand and to recognize their own unique life purpose, you know, to create an alignment between that, their purpose and their business genius so that they can feel like they're doing their real work and having a life of significance. So I'm curious if you could share with, the, with our listeners, you know, how do you find alignment with your purpose and your business genius and production in your work? I think for me, I find alignment when I really consider my experience and my story versus what, you know, when you go on the internet or you're looking on Facebook or, in, you know, wherever, and you're seeing so many people kill it and, you know, doing things and you start to feel, oh, I'm not doing as much as I could and getting into that, that realm of uh, just trying to keep up and to get on sort of this grind and hustle. Uh, for me, I've just found more alignment when I just consider my own story and I consider my own path, right? Because that's all that I really, really, truly know. I don't know the path of who else you know, has, has accomplished what have you. I, I know my story, you know, and, and I, I prefer to uh, become an expert at that. So that way I can show up and perform as I need to, to really serve and help others. It just comes from more of a self-awareness and knowing who I am. I love that because I think that one of the things you just mentioned there too is like, we have to know our own story and you have such a powerful story that brought you, you know, as you say, from the, those 28 years in a different environment. And I think a lot of people get stuck and they feel as if they can't take that leap because they're so committed, right, to the existing story. So tell me a little bit, share with us, if you will, how you made that transition. What was, what was that story for you that brought yeah. you where you are? You know, and it, took, it, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I really started to acknowledge this, but really it's been my relationship with the church. So me growing up in church was very much a part of my life. I mean, literally, and it wasn't like we were a, a family that went once a week. No, no, <laughs> we were there several times a week, you know, we usually could be counted on for any sort of volunteer, you know, something's going on at the church. And, you know, most people might think, oh, well, who's going to show up to that? We were there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> very devoted. And that just was my life that I, that I grew up in knowing. Once I started to get older and make decisions for myself, I stayed in that lane because that's what I knew. And so with that, now with all of my energy and focus now to, you know, jump into the world, you know, even starting in college, I didn't venture out into doing a bunch of partying and things like that. In fact, my college years were spent, you know, in, in, in evangelistic efforts as part of a choir on some of the busy, busiest party nights at school. You know, we were, you know, trying to evangelize with the people going to parties. So this was, this was my life and this extended even beyond college to, you know, now I'm an adult with an with a actual job, you know, as a teacher. And at that point, uh, I started to, because I was very interested in, in the Bible, that's what you're supposed to do. And, and I decided to get a master's in theology, you know, <laughs> to continue the education. And then uh, as well, I got married to the only man I'd ever been with. So wow. all this was very much something that I took seriously and it was a part of my identity part of who I was. And so, yeah. And I, and I want to tap into this because it's important. I don't want anybody to miss this. I love what you just said, which is I stayed in the lane because that's what I knew. Yeah. Right. Like that's a really powerful 
I wanted to say aphrodisiac. It was like, it really does, you know, there's a level of safety there, but there's also, like you said, like, because that's what I knew. Like I knew that's that. What I knew. That's what I knew. Yeah. It's safe. Oh it's my comfortable. Gosh. You know, it's yeah. expect, you know, all the kind of stuff. And so essentially things changed though, when I moved to Philadelphia. So I'm originally from Virginia and I moved to Philly for, you know, business related uh, adventures I was taking there. And I, I got there and I'm not around my family anymore. I'm not necessarily you know, kind of in the routine that everyone is usually there. And, but I started to, we did, I did visit, visit some churches at that time when I got there, but I just, I felt this pressure, you know, it's just something that I just was, I became aware of. I'm like, why do I feel this pressure to join a church? What is that about? Because at the end of the day, it's just the same old, same old. This is when I started to recognize something that was different and that I wanted more. And so now that I'm apart from, you know, <laughs> that sort of routine, I actually had the opportunity to open up and consider these things. And I ended up deciding that I wasn't going to go to church anymore. I said, I'll just do something online, you know, and, and do that. But then bit by bit, I just started to understand more and learn more outside of the, outside of the Bible, if you will. And, you know, that road for which I'm very excited about and so thankful that I did, it definitely was one that uh, was scary at the same time. You know, when you consider this is your identity, who, who are you outside of going to church every Sunday? Who, who am I outside of? picking up the Bible and being this leader and things of that nature, it was very hard to consider and confront those things and say, you know what, but I think that there's something more that I want. I don't know if this is it. So I'm going to take a leap. <laughs> I'm going to take a jump and, you know, just, you know, uh, sort of back away from this aspect of, of myself. And I've just figured out a pattern. I'm a math person. So that's what I taught. And I just figure out patterns. The more that I've done that, the more I've gotten closer to the things that I actually enjoy and, more of a peace and understanding and just, you know, joy I have about life, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis more than I had before. And I just noticed that pattern. Whenever I give up some identity that I thought I had to be, it just releases me to understand more of like, oh, that's who I actually really am. You know? Yeah. And then like the, the phrase that I thought, that I thought I had to be, not, not that you were, but that you were kind of still like, and I hear that, like taking on the role of something. Can you talk a little bit about like, what made you recognize? I love that you see the patterns, but what made you recognize there was a pattern there that was like, oh, like what's your red flag when you realize, oh, I'm doing this because I think I, that's what I'm supposed to be doing or have to be doing. I think eventually through a lot of, you know, other studies and stuff that I did, I started to become more aware of my emotions. Um, so part of this process allowed me to do some emotional work to understand that to be sort of an inner guidance that I have that lets me know if I'm on track and or if I'm not. And so that's something that I just go to, period. And um, even to this day, I have to acknowledge, you know, where I'm in that state, you know, <laughs> so where it's guiding me to. And yeah, so that, that for me is what I started to pick up as a pattern. And also to notice that any sort of fear that I was getting ready to face in terms of letting something go or having to have a diff difficult conversation um, with a family member or something, I just noticed that that fear, it's like I, I just picked up that as well but I still persevered through it and then got to the other side and was like, Oh, that, that was okay. <laughs> it wasn't as terrible as I thought it was going to be. And I was able to, to push through it. So that's another thing that I picked up. I'm like, okay, fear is just trying to keep me safe, but really I'm going to be okay. Do you think that when you, when you started to recognize the fear as kind of that safety valve, it sounds like, then knowing what it was allowed you to kind of go, okay, so I can, you know, like I always say, fear the, feel the fear and do it anyway, right? Like, it's like, there's, there's a part of that. Do you feel like with, with your journey, that like leaning into that was really part of getting through too? Yeah, I think so. And again, on the other side of the fear, there was just something better, mm. something more exciting. And, yeah. um, and that's been true even in, you know, even in, the, let's say, going back to my uh, original story about leaving the church. Now, having gone through those fears where I separated myself and just made different decisions, I feel closer to God than I've ever felt before in my life. You know what I mean? So it's like the reward on the other side is so much better, too. So that's another pattern I picked up. I said, OK, it's going to be scary. It's, you know, it's going to be this it's going to be that. But there's something on the other side that you know, I have to, I have to see, I'm supposed to experience that is for me. So that's just where, you know, again, that, that pattern I definitely picked up and knew to push past it. Like you said, 
And how, so where have you come to through your work? Cause I know like you started as a teacher and now you're this videographer, is that correct? Like, was that well, video, correct? yeah, videographer slash video producer, depending producer, on, yeah. yes. uh -huh. depending on what the project is. <clears throat> exactly. So, like, how did you get, like, where, where did that piece come in? Is that part of what you recognize as your own gift or how, how did you become, how did you take that path? Yeah. Interesting. So back when I was in middle school, I grew up in church, like I said, and there were all these events that would happen over the summer or throughout the year. And there were these flyers that they wanted us to hand out to the people in the community or at school to invite people to come to vacation Bible school or whatever it was. And these flyers were horrendous. I mean, like the ugliest things I'd ever seen, because I, I also would look on, on in, the, in this Sunday circular and see really good design flyers and things like that. I'm like, well, why does ours look like that? You know, <laughs> And that's what got me on the computer, just trying to figure out how to make what I was seeing better. And so in that world, you start to also delve into video that comes up in that, that world as well. So, but, but I, I just did stuff like that for free. In middle school, in high school, even in college, you know, I would make videos for our groups and things like that. But it wasn't until I started teaching that somebody had requested that I do something similar for their business. And they asked me how much I would charge for it. That's what changed everything. <laughs> That's You're what like, changed everything. A minute. Like, Wait a minute. First of all, I, people owe me money if that's the case. Secondly, uh, <laughs> but no, it was just, uh, you know, I, I recognized that I was like, wow, okay, maybe I could just do this on the side to make some extra money mm -hmm. as a teacher. So that's what I started doing. So I did that for two years while I was teaching full time. And eventually, you know, I, I got connected with a, a business coach and, you know, some, some good people around me that actually encouraged me and put me on a path to quit teaching mm. so that I could pursue doing video. And then one thing left, led after another, like I started off as a one woman show and then ended up producing, you know, a number of projects all over the country. <laughs> so with different locations. And so it just, it just grew and grew that way, which is really exciting. Now it's, everything's kind of come full circle. I just launched uh, a teen video academy where I'm teaching teenagers uh, from the ages of 12 to 13, I mean, sorry, 12 to 18, how to, how to make videos and giving them the frameworks how to do it. My end goal with that is to allow them to build a technical skill set, also to build up their confidence, and, um, and to also provide some opportunities where they can see that what they can do with their, with their minds and with their hands can also sustain them and even mm. sustain their families. So right. that's, that's kind of the direction that I'm in right now. Other than that, I do other projects too. <laughs> do you think that, that that particular project then, like you know, one of the questions I, I like to ask people is like, what do you see? Because I think that when we are aligned with our purpose, we do serve the world because we're actually showing up the way we're meant to. So as you kind of found your way to this video realm, how do you see that making an impact on the world for the better? Yeah, I see that intentionally created video is going to be a huge part of how we as a planet um, sort of rise in our consciousness and our self-awareness to see ourselves as more than we are. And the best way to do that is to see that in, in, in the stories of each other. And so it's my intention, I guess, you know, vision-wise is to really see teenagers, especially, they hold a special place in my heart. But for really for everybody to understand that they have the ability to create, they have an amazing story. No matter, some people think that they have a very boring story. I beg to differ. We've all felt emotional pain. We've all felt some level of physical pain. And at some point we're going to die. You know, <laughs> we all share those things in common. Therefore, there's a lot that we can learn from each other. So that way we can have more of a, a loving, empathetic heart towards other people. Mm. So yeah. That, I, that's how I really see my work impacting. And I, I, I've even been teaching my teenagers that are in my academy right now. Of course, there is a potential that you could become well-known for your work and well-known for creating on YouTube and be a YouTube star and all this stuff. But I try to emphasize the importance of every video is about making an impact, make a difference in one person's life. And that's what will allow you to grow in that direction. So that way you're doing and impacting somebody through something that you love. It's just an, a, a beautiful exchange, you know, to know that for yourself and to make an impact from that. Yes. And that exchange, that's that energetic exchange with that. I think most people find when they are stuck in a place like you were when you started out where 
you were just kind of going along with emotions, you don't realize how much energy for yourself you're using or giving up, if you will, in an, in an area or an effort that isn't actually serving as best as it could. And, and do you recognize for yourself or have you recognized that, you know, when you're doing the work that you're meant to be doing, you have actually more energy to do it? Have you noticed that? Yes, yes. And, and the things start to line up to give you the opportunity to do it as well. You're definitely becoming more of a magnet for the things that you, that you do want and that you do want to see happen. So bit by bit, people will start to come in, come in your, come into your uh, network for whatever reason. A num- just a countless things can happen. We live in a very diverse and pretty magnificent planet and universe and how all these things just kind of work out. And we have no control over it whatsoever. Only thing that we can control is what our purpose is. You know, we can control how we act out on that purpose, you know, and, and how we choose to show up. Can you share a time when you were like in that moment where you're like, wow, like I said this thing and I was, I put my intention into that. And now all of a sudden I have this very experience where something was brought back to me that I needed to keep moving forward. You know, I, I like the small things. The small things really get me going. So when, when, when I lose things like my keys or something like that, <laughs> I know that that's one thing, but I just, I just get in a different space and I, I get it to my heart and then I, it, eventually they show right up. That for me, is just always a very small reminder of what can happen on a bigger scale. And it does start to happen on a bigger scale. In fact, at one point I wrote down a dollar amount, for example, that I wanted to, to bring in and attract into my life. And the very next call that I had, I didn't bring up the pricing of what I was going to charge. I asked what their budget was and their budget was exactly what I would have wrote, written down. So things like that, you know, definitely happen as well from time to time. And, you know, you just have to be open to it and just trust that it's going to, it's going to come. Yeah. I, I like to call those a kiss from the universe going, yeah, you got this. Right. You yep. know, you're on the right track. Um, so, you know, I want to, I want to make sure we, we help people understand from your perspective, because your journey was so much and probably similar to many of theirs, you know, we talk in this show to a lot of entrepreneurs and leaders who are looking at making a change on the fence about whether or not it's right to do. And maybe like you have spent a long time feeling like this is just what I do, right? This is how it's always been done. Or this is this is the way that it just is. And I don't really have any other options. And yet, as you said, maybe there's an inkling that something else is out there. So I would love to give you the opportunity to kind of share your final words for them as like, how would you encourage them to move forward um, if, if you were sitting having coffee with them today? Wow. I definitely would, would say that it's really, really important to understand how powerful we are. And, uh, and also I would say it's, it's really keen to really dive into in that going within. I think a lot of times we try to solve all of our problems by doing something physical, but there's another aspect that is always at work, (laughs) even without us doing anything. You're not controlling the fact that your heart is beating or that lung is, you know, air is pumping in and out of your lungs. You have, you don't have anything to do with that. That's, that's happening, right? There's so much that's happening that we think that we can manipulate and control. And yes, we can, of course, but when it comes to things that really, like you just, you cannot control. Those are the things and the aspects that we really have to trust and just know that there were, everything is working out for us and that we have to go within, I think, to, to understand that and see that. So take the opportunity as much as you wanna go and fix something on the outside, also go on the inside because there's definitely some fixing well, I wouldn't even say any fixing, but just some acknowledging to, that needs to take place of the existence of that part of yourself that is connected to how everything is coming together in the first place. So that's, that's just what I would say. It's definitely for anything you want to create in your life to go within. I love it. That is a great place for us to leave it today. I love that. Yes, for anything you want to create in your life, go within. Because I believe you're right. I believe that we all do have everything we need. We are connected, as I often say, to the universal source of all that is. We are here on purpose to deliver something that's uniquely ours. I'm glad to have you with us, Parshel, and that you are indeed now in a place where you are showing up and delivering from that 
from that wonderful, juicy well of life and, and creativity that's giving other people hope to do the same. So thank you so much for being here. To all of my listeners, thank you for watching and listening to us today. We will make sure that, well, why don't you tell them, Parshal, how can they get a hold of you and learn more about what you're up to and the team project and all of that? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the Teen Academy, if anyone's interested in checking that out, um, we have a number of people who are interested in actually sponsoring teens or they have a teen. So that's, uh, you can see that at myvideoplaytime.com forward slash teen is where you can see more information about the Teen Academy. Otherwise, if anyone has questions related to video, I think we're all with, with the response of what's happening today. Uh, I really definitely uh, have been forced, if you will, into becoming more uh, camera friendly, if you will. So uh, with that, I know it's come up a lot, a lot of struggles and a lot of pains, especially like trying to figure out how to finally get a grip on that video thing. So if anyone needs help in that regard, if any size of uh, any business, uh, I'm here to help. And so that's connectwithparshell.com. Fantastic. There you go. You've heard it here. Connectwithparshell.com. Check out her teen information. Don't worry if you didn't write that down or you're driving because we don't want you to write, write that down. We will have all of those links available to you in the comment section and, the, and so you can get those and get connected with her. And if you are one of those people who is now saying, yes, it's time for you to follow your purpose, please do come and visit oracleonpurpose.com and let's get started so that you too can have a life that is driven and aligned with your purpose and your genius. Thank you so much again, Parshal, for being here. Thank you to everybody listening. I am Leah Dunlap, and this is the Oracle On Purpose podcast. Thanks for tuning in to the Oracle On Purpose show. If you found value in this episode, we'd appreciate you leaving a comment. Also, you can subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. If you'd like to get clear on your highest vision and next steps, go to oracleonpurpose.com. See you next week.